Hello gamers, it's Ronnie from Cuddlepunk. Let me ask you guys a question. Do you like to party while sad? Do you like PRS guitars? Do you like riffs that'll make you more sweaty than Paul Heyman at the end of SummerSlam? Well, folks, I've got the band for you. Cut Your Losses is here. Guys, what's going on? How are we doing today? Hi, we're doing great. We're Thank good. you for having us. No problem. All right, really quickly before we get started, I'm just gonna have you guys introduce yourselves, left to right, right to left, whichever you guys wanna do. I'm gonna have you introduce your names, uh, your pronouns and what you guys do in the band. I'll go first. Yep. Go first. I'm Joseph Martinez, uh, he, him, and I am the drummer of the band. I'm Issa Martinez, she, her, and I am the guitarist and vocalist. Uh, Alex Kerminger, he, him, also a guitarist and vocalist. I am Joshua Lines, uh, uh, he, him, and bass player. Cut your losses. Hell yeah. So I guess we're going to start with, how did you guys all meet? Yeah, so he is my little brother. Yes, yeah, so we um, met. We met around uh, twenty years ago. Yep, sounds about before. right. At the hospital, <laughs> um, and then I was in a band with Josh um, in high school. We met, and um, then we kind of I broke off from that band, and then we reconnected, um, and then I'm married to him. So okay, <laughs> we were I w when we were at the uh, snooze show. My girlfriend and I were wondering if that is what was going on because we uh, saw yeah. both of the rings on only your fingers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. We debated trying to pull off the whole uh, Jack and Meg White thing, but it's just <laughs> difficult. Well, it's difficult. one of those things where like if people ask, we're not gonna like be weird and secretive about it, but it's just not something that's like entwined with our band image. Like they're just separate, you know, our personal relationship and our like musical creative relationship, so. Of course. True. And then, yeah, so what's a funny story about how we met as a band is Issa and I were actually in a separate band together a uh, different band before this called Blind Induction. And that band kind of split apart and the two of us recruited Josh to like replace that best player. And we were gonna kind of be just the same band, but then it became clear very quickly that we were gonna go in a completely different direction. So we went with a different name and totally new project. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then Joseph actually didn't come into the band originally as a permanent member. Yeah. We were like slated to be in a battle of the bands and we lost the drummer that we had gotten. And um, I was like, well, my brother plays drums. Like we just need someone in literally a month. And I was like, hey, you want to do it? He had never played drums in a band ever before. And he was like, I mean, yeah, I guess. And then we did it. We didn't know if we were ever going to play a show again. And then now we're going to be doing this for as long as it'll, as long as the yeah. music world will let us. <laughs> yep. I personally hope it's for a long time. Cause I checked out your guys' EP that you put out last year. I was listening to it yesterday. It blew my mind the one thing that was weird about it no of course but the one thing that was weird about it um i saw that the name of the band on the ep was skylight cinema when did you guys change your names to cut your losses from skylight cinema uh pretty recently yeah like in september or was it, late august? it was like right before august september yeah 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 because we had a show and we were still skylight cinema and we had known we wanted to change it for a little bit uh and so it kind of came together right before we played a show at bottom lounge and that name change was actually like really, really, we cut, we cut it really close. Like all of like the promotional stuff for that show, like they, they had our old name for it and then it came together like the last second. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we were, we were Skylight Cinema from like when we started till probably August, September, September, August, yeah. September. Yeah. So like the original name Skylight Cinema, that they came about like before I joined the band, like right before. Um, and they just needed a name and then during quarantine, we had a lot of time to think and like discuss where we were with the band, where we're going, uh, what we wanted for our image, stuff like that. And like Sky Cinema didn't really have a meaning for any of us. And it's also hard for people to remember. We'd have to tell them like three times sort of like, oh, okay, I got it. Um, so we went through like 15, 20 different names. And that was like the first one that like really stuck yeah. with all of us. Um, and that would just mean something that clicks with all of us, whether it's relationships or jobs or just areas in life that we were in. That just means a lot to us. I feel like it suits like our image and our sound yeah. well. So yeah, our last band name literally was just it's, we might as well have just done a bit, sorry. like a random band name generator because it was like that level, that that quality of a band name because it was just the first two words that popped into my head, and uh, it didn't have anything like meaningful to us. And this this one feels actually like it hold some sort of relevance with our music and our lyrics and stuff. I love the name Cut Your Losses. I do love the idea of a pop punk band name generator, like a, like the Wu-Tang name generator. 
That, there needs to be one. I feel like I probably Googled pop punk band name generator and it doesn't exist. I'm not sure. Maybe anybody it doesn't. Who, anybody who's watching this who knows how to code, make a pop punk band generator immediately. Yes. Especially nowadays, it, it needs to be a thing. Yes. yes. Oh my God. Um, who are your influences musically and lyrically? Who writes the majority of the music and who writes the majority of the lyrics? We share the lyrics and music writing pretty equally. Um, do you want to go first on your influences or? Can we just go down the line? Or we can just go in order. Do you have, or are you not prepared to answer prepared. this? Take some time to think about it. Yeah, sure. Okay. Do you want to go first then? Uh, <laughs> sure. This is always a tough question. This is always the one that I like to spend the most time on, but I'll try to like summarize it. Because a lot if of I my- can really quickly, just to like say yeah. what I heard immediately when I was listening to uh, the EP yesterday, the two names that kept jumping out to me were State Champs and Bayside. Cool. Bayside okay. especially on that, that. one. <laughs> yeah, to totally. I'll take that any day of the week. We've had some people like say things that we reminded them of that was like, that doesn't make sense, but yeah. sure, that's fine as long as you like it. <laughs> right. The common one is always going to be Paramore yeah. because we have a female vocalist. And it's always just like, do we sound like Paramore or do we have a female vocalist? You know? <laughs> exactly. exactly. Yeah, some people are just like, uh, who's a band with a female vocalist? That's kind of yeah, makes this kind of music. Paramore. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I'll totally take State Champs. I love State Champs. They're definitely an influence of mine as far as like the pop punk stuff goes. Um, I listened to a lot of metal growing up and I, I still do, but that kind of influenced my kind of helped my guitar playing a lot like I, a band called periphery is one that oh, i would yeah. definitely call as a, call an influence for me uh specifically their guitar player mark holcomb the prs that i play at shows is a is a mark holcomb signature and it's like my favorite guitar he's he's like a genius and his riff writing and everything just has inspired me so much and as far as like the pop punk stuff goes obviously like story so far and four years strong just like the kind of heavier pop punk bands have really influenced uh that kind of when i read that kind of stuff what about you um i mean the first like guitarist that got me into playing guitar was jack white i watched that documentary um what is it called it, it, might, it get might get loud, loud. Yeah. i watched Very that good. and i watched jack white play and i was like i want to do that i'm gonna do that i'm gonna buy a guitar and i did um so that was kind of my how i got into guitar um and then i guess I don't know, it's hard to pinpoint exact influences, especially lyrically, I don't really know. Um, I listened to a lot of Nora Jones growing up, so I think she inspires me a lot with her lyrics and her, I mean, her sound, I get compared to her sometimes, um, which is a huge compliment. But bands that I listen to now, I mean, I'm a huge Story So Far fan. They're probably like, they're always my top artists every single year in my Spotify. Um, so just a lot, of, a lot of pop punk, a lot of that kind of stuff. Do you guys have any just favorite artists? I mean, <laughs> for me, like, I don't write the songs, but I like to think <laughs> that, like, in the way I play, the way I approach playing music and bass playing and just my presence on stage, I try to model a little bit of, like, you know, the artists I listen to and, you know, artists I've seen. So, obviously, like, the big names that come to my mind are, like, bands like Metallica, uh, Bruce Springsteen, Rise Against. Um, like, musically, for me, those are, like, my three favorite artists. And just like trying to harness like the energy that I've seen from going to see them at live shows, like just trying to pull that out for me. Um, but really any music, I mean, like, I don't, I hate to be that guy to be like, oh, I'll listen to anything, but I legitimately will listen to anything. Um, I try and find something I like in most music. So it really, really takes a lot for me to be like, I don't like this band or this artist. <laughs> yeah. And as far as stage presence goes, Josh literally carries the band. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he has the most energy out of all three, like more yeah. than all three of us combined. Yeah. Josh and Joseph both have like way more energy than us because we both have like, like serious like stage fright, honestly. Yeah. And it takes a lot to like try to Break have some sort of energy because like we're having fun, but we're like, don't mess up, don't mess up. <laughs> Yeah, there are definitely points where I'm like, I wish I was not a drummer so I could just run around on stage. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, for me, I don't know. It's hard for me to think of a specific influence. Um, but growing up, I listened to mainly just like a lot of, one of the big ones is Soundgarden. Um, so Matt Cameron, specifically his work on Soundgarden more than Pearl Jam. Um, he was a huge influence for me growing up, um, playing drums and um, probably more akin to our sound is like the band called The Intersphere. 
and the drummer is oh, yeah. Moritz Mueller. Um, I just love his playing. And then back to Periphery again, Matt Halpern is a freaking he's a god legend. He's a god, yeah. He's so freaking good. Um, just his his presence playing, you can really feel his passion for his music, and he really just puts his all into it. And he's just he's phenomenal with that. <laughs> Dude, you made me for you made me. Thank God you reminded me that I literally meant to say like my first influence was Chris Cornell. Yeah. And I fucking forgot. <laughs> Can we swear? Oh, absolutely. Oh, fuck it. <laughs> are you fucking kidding me? You guys are on band and I'm not supposed to let you guys swear. What are you talking about? Yes. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Um, so the two genres that kept coming to mind specifically when I was listening to the EP yesterday, the one that is a little bit less so is more of the like butt rocky stuff on the what's the name of the one like the fire you're gonna get burned song burn burn, 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 yeah. burn yeah but then the main thing that i heard and i heard this when i saw you guys live was easy core was that like an intentional thing to bring more of the easy core elements into it or was it just a happy accident so easy core is definitely something we all have listened to a ton and I would say it's it leans more towards like a happy accident like it's I'm 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 like fine with that but it's not necessarily like we're we're, no it wasn't like yeah. we're gonna play easy core now it kind of it just came out in your like riff and breakdown yeah I kind of found my 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 strong suit with like li, uh, lyric and riff writing mainly it kind of fits with like the head under like the heavy pop punk umbrella and any sort of like kind of pop like pop punk subgenre in general is just where I, f I feel like most comfortable with writing my music. Um, and then Issa, you, you have like a more of like a grungy um, kind of like 90s rock, pop rock yeah, kind of vibe to a lot of your so stuff. Funny. So I feel like it has a cool, um, cool blend. And we, we've, we don't really know what to call ourselves because like we could just go with alternative. We're currently just labeling ourselves on Spotify as like grungy pop punk because yeah. that seems to be a good all encompassing term. But yeah, I, I mean, bands like um, Chunk, No Captain Chunk and stuff like that are definitely, I, I love those super punchy, chunky pop punk riffs for sure. It feels like with Chicago bands like Belmont and Action Adventure, and then you've got people like Meet Me at the Altar and then Chunk, No Captain Chunk with their like first album in seven years now, it feels like there is an easy core revival coming. Do you guys see yourselves as possibly being a part of that or would you ra or like at least if that opportunity comes up would you yeah that's I mean that's how we're coming across then like sure like we'll ride whatever <laughs> we'll, way we'll take whatever we can get <laughs> of course yeah. and, um because we're yeah huge supporters of all of those bands so, oh yeah and, and it's cool to see the Chicago scene too really churning out a lot of more pop punk and easy core kind of styles um because I feel like for a while that wasn't really super popular kind of subgenre honor in the scene um but seeing a lot of bands kind of taking off you doing that kind of music is really cool since that kind of stuff really inspires us so yeah like action adventure they there's we've we've seen them like a bunch of times and we love those, we love those guys they're so sick uh they they've been making like heavy pop punk for or easy core or whatever you want to call it for a long ass time and i they, think this is their time they finally time. like yeah are able to shine because of like the revival of that kind of stuff, which is great. Yeah. Um, I think they were all of my top songs on Spotify rap this year. <laughs> okay, so Spotify rap's been mentioned twice this year and I told you guys <laughs> that there were gonna be some surprises happening in uh, this interview. So what I'm gonna need you guys to do all now is I need you guys to take out your phones. Oh, this is and such a good idea. We're gonna go through uh, songs and artists for each one of you guys on Spotify rap this year. Okay. Oh, this is gonna be a little embarrassing. That's the idea. Nah, it's going to be concerning for my mental health. I think you guys <laughs> understand MGK was in my top five. Oh. Last year. <laughs> so you guys have nothing to worry about. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. I can set the music side for the whole different thing. Oh, because you barely use Spotify. Yeah. yeah. This is like, I have one though. <laughs> he's like one of the two people that uses Apple Music over Spotify. Oh, my. I, my some of my friends are those people. I don't know what they're doing. We don't, don't we bully him it. all the time. It's 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 yeah, I only use uh underground not popular things. So uh, <laughs> yeah. He uses title. <laughs> oh god. All right. So I'm doing top artists first. Top artists and then top songs, yeah. All right, top five artists. Rise Against, Metallica, Stephen Barton, Turn Style, and Run the Jewels. 
It's a good variety. Yeah. Um, the top three artist, Stephen Barton, is the composer for the game Apex Legends. <laughs> so I'll let you. That makes sense. I'll let you do with that information what you will. All right. Top five songs. Number one is the title theme from Demon Slayer. Number two is uh, Cloud Nine, the Tegan and Sarah version from Beach Bunny. Tegan's. Number three <laughs> is The Numbers from Rise Against. Uh, number four is By My Side from Belmont. Yeah. And number five is Broken Dreams Incorporated from Rise Against. Very nice. <laughs> Should right. we go, go for it, Alex? In succession. All righty. Uh, so this, I, I hope somebody knows who this is, but Ruben is my, was my number one artist, actually. This this year i listened to their album like on repeat for like a month and that probably was enough to put it as the number one artist i found it's like from 2006 or something they had like they are like this really small band from the uk that never really blew up anywhere else and don't they, they broke up like a while ago but they, i just randomly discovered them i think they were like one of their songs on my spotify like discover so that's ended up being my number one artist. And then like I mentioned, number two, Action Adventure is on the top artist. Number three is Sleep Token. They released an amazing album that I had on repeat this year. Uh, the story so far is number four. They're like almost always on my top five. Uh, and then Say Anything. I actually was really late to the party on them, but discovered their first album um, early, earlier this year and I was obsessed with it. And the top songs are literally just the EP, basically like almost the entire EP from Action Adventure. Action. It's literally all Action Adventure. My top five songs: Semi Prologue, Poser, Pulling Focus, Nothing Left, and Barricade. Oh, from all of them. Their EP. Action Adventure's <laughs> my nice fan. Yeah, my top genre is pop punk, so it makes sense. Okay, so mine is weird because for the first like half of the year, I really didn't listen to any music because I was just in like a complete music rut. So my the algorithm was a little um, a little weird for me. <laughs> Cause there's one on my, on the fifth that I'm like, how did that, how did that make it to my top five? But number one is story so far, of course. Number two is tired lion, which is this girl from Australia. She makes really cool music. Number three, again, don't know how this made it. Jimmy Eat world. I like started listening to their first or their second album because I saw pitchfork posted about it. Um, and I listened to that album and I guess that just made it into my top. Number four was Taylor Swift. Um, number five is a cover band called First to Eleven. I think I listened to literally one of their covers, but it was because we did a cover of Sugar We're Going Down, um, and they have a female singer, and so I listened to that cover a bunch, and I think that's <laughs> I think that's what did it. Um, and then my top songs are um, Nerve, and I think that's the Don Broco song, not the Source of Our Song. Oh, really? Yeah. The more um, I don't know. And then number two was Death of Communication. I forget what band that's by. They have a weird name. Something Thieves or something? Yeah. Uh, number three was Rome, Story So Far. Number four is The Hard Part by, what's that band? Oh. This uh, band we discovered in a video game. Yeah, they're freaking incredible, actually. That's it's they, they have like one song that's grunge, even though the rest of their stuff is like It's pop. the like, coolest song I've ever heard. It was from some indie game that we were playing, and it was just like randomly in one part of the game for like 30 seconds, and I had to find like scouring the internet for it, and we both like have been jamming that song for so what long. What is their name? The uh Hard -huh. Is the, the summer, summer dare. dare? Check them yeah. out. They're cool. And the number five was with or without, which is a tired lion song. And my top shot was pop punk. Yeah. All right. Cool. This is gonna. I actually don't have any pop punk on my top five. Um, You're out of the band. My number one artist is actually this guy um, who goes under the name Giles Corey. I'm very mentally ill. Uh, <laughs> uh, the next one is uh, Soccer Mommy. Uh, she's great. Um, snail Mail and the band Loathe. Uh, Loathe has been my top five albums. They're t both their albums have been my top five um, for the past two years. They're incredible. I love Loathe. Uh, I think the few amount of time, the little amount of time I have on Spotify, Charles Corey is also my top, unfortunately. <laughs> Um, top Does songs. Top, top songs is actually to a snail mail. Uh, Lush, her album Lush was actually the very first album I listened to in 2021. It was like at 2 a.m. I was just in my room in the dark and I just listened to the album all the way through. It's a vibe. Um, and then that was Heat Wave and Pristine. And then I have Circle the Drain by Soccer Mommy, incredible song. 
Um, she has a, like a deluxe version of that album. It's pretty cool. It's in a school binder. And then Giles Corey, uh, Winter House, and then ACD by the band Nothing. And uh, the greatest thing I could say about my music taste or my music raps this year is uh, I had 69,420 minutes of music. <laughs> Literally had the 69,420. Yeah. 69, That's amazing. Yeah. That yeah, I had it. My friend sent me his raps like the day of that that came out. And I was like, oh, I should check mine. I'm like, so mine's in hours. It's 1,157 hours. And I'm like, oh, I should convert that to minutes. And I converted that. I'm like, are you kidding me right now? <laughs> That's <laughs> 69, 420. That's yeah. fucking perfect. Yeah. He wins. <laughs> Thank you guys for indulging me in that. And because I don't want to punish you guys without punishing myself, I will read mine as well. <laughs> my top five were, um, my number one was against me. Then, oh, right. yeah, yeah um, Ice Nine Kills. Um, I've been in three Ice Nine Kills videos, actually. What? <laughs> what? Yeah. Yeah. Three? Uh, a, a director, an old director. So I have a, I'm an acting major, which is why I'm doing uh, interviews of bands on YouTube now. Uh, All right. And... Uh, <laughs> One, uh, an old director of mine back in high school, he used to be in Ice Nine Kills back when they were a ska band. What? Like, 20 years ago. And yeah, uh, he's still time. friends. Yeah, he's still friends with them. And uh, he got me into the Hell in the Hallways video. And then they just oh. kept calling me. And they kept letting letting me be an extra in extra videos. That's all right. awesome. Well, I'm that's gonna have sick. to watch those videos I'm again. Check. And, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Send watch. us all three yeah. of those videos. We can yeah, find. I will. find <laughs> Where is the Cuddle Punk contest. Find me in all three Ice Nine Kills videos, and then yeah. I'll give you merch that I don't have. <laughs> uh, number three. Do you guys know Patton Oswalt, the comedian? Yeah. I will go through periods of just listening to all of his stuff on Spotify. <laughs> <laughs> um, then number four is Paramore. Number five is Slipknot. Uh, and then my top hey. five songs from five to one. Welcome Home by Coheed and Cambria. Industry right. Baby by Lil Nas X and Jack Harlow. Trust Me by, do you guys know Sincere Engineer? Yes, yeah. that was a great song. Love them to I've death. been blasting their album on repeat. All the time. It's so Al good. Alex will be like, we'll be driving, and Alex will be like, I feel like you play the song right. It's like I just play the song all the time. <laughs> like this is like the fifth time in a row he's played. <laughs> it's they're perfect. Yeah. Um, number two is Heat Waves by Glass Animals, and number right. one is Estella by Kenny Hoopla and Travis Barker, who I saw at Riot Fest and just completely blew me away. Nice. 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 Very cool. This is a fun little segment, guys. Thank you for indulging me in this. Yeah, yeah of course. Sure. Yeah. yeah. It's nice to expose ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> That's all the internet is. Um, More embarrassing. How was it with how was it working with Radfest Presents for that show with Stage Moms? And was it did you guys really get that show just through that TikTok? First of all, you guys' TikTok game is incredible. Oh, thank you, <laughs> thank, thank you. you. But I know on. that you guys said something about on Instagram about like that about like TikTok getting you the Riot Fest Presents gig with mm -hmm. Stage Moms. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm literally just driving one day. I forgot where I was. I was going to work. I'm driving to work and I literally get a text from my partner being like, hey, you check out this TikTok. Real, like answer this TikTok immediately. And it's the Riot Fest TikTok. And it's like, hey, stitch this with your music. And so I'm driving. I can't do anything. So I immediately you know, send it to these guys. And I'm like, hey, respond to this and so we did I was in the middle of work but I work from home so I like got off my laptop and I was like okay I'm gonna real quick <laughs> film this stitch this TikTok and then I was like okay I did it it's done and like we didn't expect them to even honestly even look at it or see it or like care because there were already a lot of responses oh, there was tons so of bands yeah we were like okay well you know we shot our shot whatever um but then like what was it like a few days later it was literally like two day? days one like, two days one or two days we later had we had an email, email in our inbox from one of the riot fest promoters and we were like that's like cool. unless <laughs> unless this guy found us organically because i try and shill our stuff across the internet as much as i can that's a possibility but like otherwise other than that, sure yeah. From TikTok. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um and Whatever yeah works. it was really yeah, I mean, it's just kind of crazy to even have anybody who's listened to us or noticed us that's anywhere in the vicinity near Riot Fest at all. That's super cool. Um, but it was also really cool getting to play with the two touring bands, Stage Moms and Elbow Room. They were oh, fantastic. So cool. They were so much fun. So great, great cool. people. Oh, nice. um, the person that we actually ended up working with to master um, this upcoming EP was recommended to us by the singer from Elbow Room. So that was cool, too. Yeah, we made a bunch of that friends really that fun, night. Everyone really there was super show. cool. Yeah. It was really great. That was that felt like our first like really real show, for lack of a better word, at least <laughs> yeah. in my opinion. Um, 
it, it was just like the perfect. It a long time. It wasn't coming back after COVID. It yeah. definitely wasn't like you know the standard you know kind of DIY shows we're used to, where it's just like someone will send us a you know DM being like, hey, do you want to play a show on this date in our backyard? And we're like, hell yes, we yeah. do. Hell yeah. And then you know like, hey, we're gonna put on a show in you know someone's living room. It's like it was so weird to be like formally sent an email from somebody being like, hey play the show and then we play the show and then instead of like just like cash from someone that someone took at the door it was an actual check and that was and it said riot it fest, said riot fest, fest, said on the top. Riot fest yeah. corporation and we're cool. gonna probably frame that oh That's, you absolutely should but yeah. the guy the guy that we were emailing with also like saw all of our instagram posts and probably tagged right yeah because in, in the email he's like thank you guys so much for like the kind words of like on your instagram post and i was like oh he saw <laughs> yeah they're super nice <laughs> Yeah, that was an all like hands really down cool. perfect experience. That, that was like I will always remember that. And show. everyone at the so Cobra awesome. Lounge was really nice. Oh, yeah, Cobra yeah. Lounge is amazing. I hope we get to play there again because they're the best people. Like one of their employees, I broke a guitar string, <laughs> and he like I I didn't have like um like he had like a tool thing. Like so he was like thing. yeah, you real quick yeah, we were so on stage and I broke and we were the like guy, sound the checking. Like, the guy was like in the back while we we're sound checking. He's like, hey. I can fix it. And he's like, I got you. Come bring it here. Did and he I brought like adjust the Yeah, he, 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 he like did a setup practically on my guitar. It was not my guitar. It was oh, my yeah. Guitar. But it was, uh, I, I had this happen twice with this guitar. And apparently the saddle on my bridge was like not set up properly. So it, he just like adjusted the bridge and restrung my guitar for me. Like while we were sound checking. So the people there were really, really sick. <laughs> shout out to Cobra Lounge and shout out to Mo on the Riot Fest TikTok page. Oh, yeah. For sure. Oh, yeah. Um, you guys have a show coming up, a pretty important show on the 6th at Beat Kitchen. You guys want to talk a little bit about that? For yeah, sure. Yeah. 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 yeah about um, I don't, we're very excited. <laughs> if that's going to be our release show. Um, we're super excited to also be on the stage with Pink Squeeze and they're releasing their EP too. Um, and we're good friends with um, one of the guys from Boundary Waters. And so he literally set the whole show up. He is the best. He's the greatest. Boundary yeah. Waters are the OG. We've, we've, been so known, we've known them for two years. Two years now. now. Yeah, we've, we've, yeah. Shows. we've only played with them one other time, but we always go to each other's shows and was it talk on farms, it was. So. It's only been once. Um, it, was it was like, like yeah, yeah. it was like one of our first shows of like, we played like two shows prior to that. And I don't really consider them real shows because one of them was like a battle of bands. The other one was like, no one was there, so I don't count that show. <laughs> but they were like our like like first real show yeah. of 2019. Yeah, and like I just like messaged him on Facebook, being like, "Hey, check us out. You know, we'd like to play a show with you." And immediately he's like, "Yes, let's do it." And that was it. Yeah. Sub that was it. Downstairs. Sub right? downstairs. Yeah. And then, you know, he's a cool Andy from Boundary Waters is such a cool guy. He's the sweetest man. Yeah. Um, like I've All tried right. my best to go see them as many times as yeah. possible. Uh. Fortunately, the last time they played uh, Bee Kitchen, I think it was the last time they played Bee Kitchen, um, we were all able to make it except for Joseph because he's underage. <laughs> um, but it's so nice to just like always support them. And then he always tries to come out and support us. And he always just, yeah, he was at the Cobra Lounge. Like, he's like, he's always like always supporting always everybody touch. too. Yeah, so it's social, even cool. Yeah, they're honestly some of the most wholesome people I've they're, ever met in my yeah. life. And yeah. then we met Pink Squeeze uh, recently. Um, we went to see their show at. Uh, that was a bar near us. What's it called again? Uh, Reeds. Reeds, Reeds, which is Reeds actually yeah. like you wouldn't think it was actually like a venue from the outside of the bar, but cool it actually place, had a really yeah. cool vibe. And they like that that show was packed and it was yeah. crazy. It was like the craziest. So that'll be fun to play, play with them. And we're just excited to get this EP out. So it'll be coming out on the second, and then we'll be doing the show on the sixth. So we're super super excited, super excited about that. For that we're yeah. like about, we're like in the process we're like almost at the point where we're going to be start like really promoting it because we're going to have our artwork it's almost done and we're going to start like dropping teasers and stuff like that so we're very yeah. excited little promotional clips and stuff like that yeah yeah we, we, we put a lot into we, this. we 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 tried we tried shooting a music video so hopefully that turns out well, we'll, see. we'll yeah. see. Maybe yeah you guys a, need an editor i'm down Oh yeah, oh, yeah. yeah we, we might end up taking you up on that at some point. I got you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> all right. Just to wrap things up, um, to quote the greatest interviewer of all time, Nardwar, uh, why should people care about cut your losses? It's a good question. <laughs> it's a good question. I mean, um, because we really, really need to make more friends, and <laughs> we need to get out more. <laughs> we just want to make friends. <laughs> we just want to meet other musicians and. We want to play shows and we want to just meet as many people as possible uh, that like music and that care about this. So it's, it's really about the connection. Um, there's like 
no greater feeling to me than like going out to a show and seeing a band play and then being able to hang out with that band afterwards yeah. or just being in that crowd and just kind of like taking that energy from everybody else and just giving it back to the band and the band giving it back to you. And there's no greater feeling than that than being on the band side and being able to see people like take that energy you're giving to them and give it back. And then after the show, just kind of hanging out with everybody and just talking with everybody and just seeing how people like react to what you're saying and what you're playing and just, it feels great. It just, it's an awesome feeling. Well, that's the biggest thing I think I've noticed coming back after COVID too, is like, I feel like the entire scene is just, I don't know if we were all just kind of taking it for granted and that's what it is, is like everyone's really, it feels even more of a, like a tight knit community. I feel like with a lot of local bands um, of just like supporting each other, posting each other's shows in their Instagram stories and really and trying to make it out to each other's shows as much as possible. I feel like that was something that we didn't really get to be a part of before yeah. COVID. But like this time around, I feel like everyone's just much more like, yeah, we want to all connect and be friends and support each other and stuff, which is really cool. Yeah, it's this time around feels like definitely it hits different. <laughs> like it's it's definitely more meaningful and just like we didn't know how how good we had it just being able to play shows at all before and then now like it's come back like full swing and we're like playing shows as much as possible and we're just gonna ride that wave as long as we can anybody who thinks that these guys are full of shit with everything that they've just been saying uh i met them after uh their show that they did with snooze and soak and uh, disaster kid at sub t a couple months ago there is not a band on earth that is easier to talk to after a show. You, <laughs> you guys are the warmest. That means, that means a lot. That means a lot because we're so socially awkward. So social. Like I feel like I am so social, like inept, like to the point where like I can't even like I don't know how to make conversation with people. So that that means a lot. I'm glad you thought so. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. But I think you literally have like in our bio something to the effect of please come talk to us because we will not have the courage to like go up and talk to you. <laughs> but we are friendly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we yeah, want to talk to everybody, but we're so socially awkward. Yeah, it's like the worst double-edged sword. <laughs> <laughs> I get you. All right, thank you guys so much for doing this. Um, if people want to find you, where can they do that? Yes, um, on all of the things. Uh, we are Cut Your Losses Chai, C-H-I, for short for Chicago. Um, and then on Twitter, we're Cut Your Losses underscore. Yeah, and if you want to find our music, uh, we're on Title. <laughs> title and Deezer only. Title and Deezer only. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, we got Spotify, Apple Music, all the things. Our old EP is already on there. Um, and then we're releasing a new one on January 2nd. January yep, 2nd. so keep an eye out for that. And if you guys want to find any of more of the best band interviews possible or just anything else that I've got going on, you can go ahead, click subscribe. You can click that notification bell to make sure you guys get notified. This is not easier the second time. This still sucks a lot. Let me tell you. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you all for watching and I will see you next time. All right, man. Thank Bye. you.